Hey, I hope you're doing well. So I've been staying in Mumbai for the last eight months. And yes, I do miss my lab a lot, which is back at my home. So I've decided to put together a portable electronics lab setup, which I can technically carry in a fanny pack. But I don't actually carry a fanny pack. But you do get an idea of what I'm trying to say over here. I'll go over the things which I've included in that uh, portable electronics lab setup in a later video if I get time. But uh, today I'm going to talk about this uh, portable soldering iron which I recently purchased. And um, some of you might uh, recognize the company from the logo. Uh, yes, it is Pine64. So Pine64 is a company uh, which makes um, Linux phones and Linux laptops. And then they decided to make a soldering iron. This soldering iron has a RISC-V processor in it. It has Bluetooth. You can program your own operating system, your own firmware into the soldering iron and it will get uh, regular updates. So this is the Pinesil V2. Uh, there was also a Pinesil version 1 which is uh, right now discontinued. So only uh, so you're going to find only the V2 in the market right now, which is an upgrade from the Pinesil V1, of course. And uh, I've been using it for a few days now. I really like this. I mean, in my lab, I use a Weller. Uh, I forgot the model number, but it's a very standard soldering station. And it does not um, experience any thermal issues for heat transferring or any sort of issues like that. I mean, it's a decent uh, soldering iron, which which gives you peace of mind while soldering. I mean, you don't have to think that, that whether the soldering iron is capable enough to tackle the job or not. This gave me a similar feeling. I was not expecting such a good performance from this tiny, tiny soldering iron. I mean, literally, it feels like a pen. It feels like holding a pen in your hand. I have an average hand size. And you can compare the size of this soldering iron with my hands. So um, you can remove the soldering tip from this soldering iron. You have to just undo uh, one screw over here and it comes out. So unlike the soldering station tips, this is an active tip. That means that the resistive heating element is inside this tip. And that also bumps up the price uh, of these tips uh, in the market. So I guess uh, one of these tips are around $30 or something like that. But as of now, I'm happy with this conical tip. I'm not a fan of conical tips. Later on, I'll change it to a chisel tip, but uh, for now, it'll work. Uh, for the specs, um, you can see by the side of it, it says uh, 12 to 24 volts of DC input uh, and 12 volts would give you 18 watts max and 24 volts would give you 88 watts. So I don't have a 24 volt power supply. What I do have is a 20 volt one and I did manage to get 60 watts out of this tiny beast. And um, right now this runs an operating system called the Iron OS and it has plenty of features like calibration, like, uh, I mean, just a whole host of features. I'm not going into all those features because once you set them to your preferences, uh, you re really don't need to change them a lot. Um, it kind of uh, adjusts to your, uh, to your usage. Um, so... You also get um, this soldering stand and a, a rubbing sponge from Pine64. They only supply this, but not with the soldering iron. You have to you have to purchase this separately. Now, uh, the interesting part of this soldering iron is that you can power it off a USB-C connector, and it is QC 3.0 PD. Uh, all those uh, power delivery, uh, quick charge. Uh, mode supported. I'm not going into the details of all that again, but it does support all those fancy power delivery modes. So as of now, I do not have a QC charger. So all I have is this Samsung, uh, I guess it's a 15 watt charger. Yeah, it's a 15 watt charger, which can go up to nine volts. So this is no good for this soldering iron because it does need a 12 to 24 volt even on the USB-C. 
so if you have a usb c charger which only goes up to 9 volts you cannot use it with that charger or you cannot cannot use that charger with the soldering iron so what what i have decided is that uh, i'll either use it uh, of this power bank this power bank can deliver maximum of 22.5 watts and it does go up to 12 volts of uh, quick charge or pd or whatever um or i can make this uh, into an entirely portable system and uh, power this of this 5s lithium ion battery which i uh, made myself so this battery is made from my old uh, laptop battery and this uh, this battery can deliver 60 watts of power into the soldering iron uh, also i have this uh, quick charge adapter which is qc 4.0 3.0 pd and vook all those um, protocols supported you can hook up any 6 volt to um, actually for this soldering iron you need a uh, 13 volt to uh, 35 volt power source on this xt60 connector and it will give you a quick charge um, compatible output on this usb-c or the usb-a so um, what i generally do is i power it off this lithium ion battery the 5s one or my power bank it's a little less uh, um, i get a little less uh, wattage from my power bank because this can only support 22 watts of discharge whereas this lithium ion battery can go up to 60 or even more than that um, also if i hook up a dc source to this qc charger uh, qc adapter i can get 60 watts or more of uh, of it uh, so what i'm planning uh, for a plugged in type of connection is either to buy a pd or a qc charger or to use my laptop charger which is a Lenovo 65 watt charger and then uh, hook it up to this um, uh, QC adapter or I can use this I can use my laptop charger directly into the barrel jack um, okay so I'm gonna try and uh, power this uh, iron up and show you how the interface looks like so I've hooked up this battery uh, with a distribution board which is just a uh, Vero board with uh, some parallel connections. This connection is for charging the battery and this XT60 is the output of the battery. So I'm going to connect a uh, um, male XT60 with this female one and now I've got a DC barrel jack which I can plug into the soldering iron and it powers up. Right now it shows the ambient temperature. There's a whole a menu inside this soldering iron. I'm not going into that those are details which you can find in different videos and which you can experiment with your with your own soldering iron uh, as well so if you look closely uh, focus yeah now you can see there uh, i'm getting 20.2 volts and my uh, setting of temperature is 360 degrees celsius if i press the plus button it will start heating up it is actually heating up but very slowly because right now it is in the standby mode in the standby mode i guess it is supposed to maintain a temperature of 150 degrees celsius but you can change it in the menus so i'm pressing the plus button and it shows you how how much wattage it is drawing uh, right now it's about 50 watts 40 43 okay now it has reached 360 degrees celsius now it reaches the temperature very fast which is really nice now i'm just gonna try and melt some solder which is not a good test but obviously i'm gonna uh, it'll melt no issues over there and uh, just rub it off okay <clears throat> So uh, you can increase the temperature by pressing the plus icon, uh, the plus button or reduces, reduce it by pressing the minus button. And uh, if you long press the plus button, it goes into a boost mode and I've set it uh, up to 440 degrees Celsius. And um, in the boost mode, it actually draws a bit more current and um, it gives you a boosted temperature for a very short period of time or uh, for as long as you're holding down the plus button if you long press the minus button it shuts down 
and it blinks for, to indicate that it's cooling down. So it's really simple for uh, regular operation, but you can go into the menus and change a lot of things inside this. You can even flash your own firmware, you can flash your own operating system. And uh, I mean, yeah, I have not explored all the all those things, but I really want to explore the Bluetooth functionality to turn on a remote uh, exhaust fan or something like that. But um, yeah, you can do all those things with this. Um, okay, so I'm also going to try and uh, power it off this QC uh, adapter. Uh, so just I'm going to fast forward this this section. So I've connected the QC adapter to the battery and then to the soldering iron. Uh, and as you can see that the soldering iron already negotiated the power which is to be drawn from the QC adapter and it is showing 19.5 volts because it cannot give you the full 20.2 volts which is on this battery because there's a drop in this uh, QC adapter. But even with 19.5 volts, I'll show you that it does draw a good amount of power for day-to-day -day applications for normal portable soldering app applications it won't uh, be a bottleneck or it won't slow you down uh, in india i got this and this stand for a combined price of something around five thousand rupees and it is worth every penny i would say so yeah Thumbs up to Pine64 and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.